Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is about to finally end with its DLC. Wave 6 was just announced to be released next Thursday, November 9th, and it showed us 8 tracks that are returning to the game, with a little bit of surprises here and there if you weren't looking for it. Of course, it's ending with Wii's Rainbow Road, which we all expected. Madrid Drive is coming as a Tour City track. DK Mountain from the Nintendo GameCube, which is a big one, which I was hoping for. Obviously, we knew about Wii's Daisy Circuit from the last Direct, and Prana Plant Cove being the last original Nitro track that we're getting. A heavily anticipated SNES Bowser's Castle 3 is here, Mario Kart Tour's Last City track, Rome Avanti is here, and finally, yeah, they threw in another 3DS track which seemingly was done, but it's Rosalina's Ice World. And what's very interesting about this is that that leaves one single tour track that is not included, and that is the Nitro track of Piranha Plant Pipeline, which was a new one based off of a scrapped course for Mario Kart DS, so maybe that's why they left it out. It was just kind of an Easter egg thrown to players of Mario Kart Tour, and they didn't really want it in Mario Kart 8. I, I don't really know, or maybe there's just too many Piranha Plant tracks with Piranha Plant Pipeline and Piranha Plant Cove, but at the end of the day, we're gonna be missing just one track from Mario Kart Tour, which is kind of crazy. And this is it. This is everything that we are going to get for Mario Kart 8, and it's all going to end in just one week, which means we are even closer to the next Mario Kart game, but at the same time, there's a lot of tracks that we all have to give our condolences to. Real quick, if you enjoyed Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Pass and really excited to play this last wave, leave a like down below and subscribe to let me know how excited you are for this, and let's see how many people we can get to sub from this one video, but let's dive into all the tracks that just didn't make the cut. Starting off at the very beginning with Super Mario Mario Kart on the SNES, they did a pretty good job overall. I feel like a lot of these tracks were basic in the beginning, so they would have to remake a lot of them completely from the ground up, so it's understandable why they didn't decide to bring a lot of these back. So you have Ghost Valley, which makes sense because you already have Boo Lake, and there's lots of clones of this throughout the Mario Kart series with like Broken Pier and stuff, so they probably didn't want to keep adding stages like this. And Chaco Island is kind of the same thing. With Chaco Mountain, it feels like it's just an evolutionary step from this track, giving it more vertical terrain and like up in the mountains and stuff, so this one probably wouldn't be as missed as much. Then you got Koopa Beach, which is kind of the same thing. We already have tons of beach tracks, and there's tons of beach tracks within the entire series, so this one didn't feel like it needed to be one to return. And Vanilla Lake, which once again, we have Snowland, and I just felt like they didn't want to add another track that was very similar. And Vanilla Lake, you know, it has its fans, but it's one that probably a lot of people wouldn't even care about if it was in the game or not, so you're not really missing a whole lot here. Now, for Mario Kart 64, we're missing a lot of tracks, which for a classic Mario Kart game, it kind of hurts to see all of these gone essentially probably forever, <laughs> you know, unless we see these return in the next Mario Kart. Uh, but first, we have Luigi's Raceway, which is actually a pretty good first track. I love how you can see that camera footage of everybody racing up on the screen as you're going underneath the tunnel. You have Moo Moo Farms, which is, you know, not that big of a track because it's a very small version of what Moo Moo Meadows is, and it's just not that interesting compared to that one. Uh, we have Koopa Troopa Beach, another beach one that just didn't make the cut, including Frappe Snowland, which was a track that we've seen return a couple of times with tons of giant snow walls surrounding the players. I thought that was a pretty good track and kind of surprised that one didn't return. We have Mario Raceway, which was a pretty cool looking track. I enjoy the track for sure, but I completely understand because we have lots of Mario circuits and Mario themed tracks. Um, Wario Stadium, which was a big one for a lot of people, but once again, we do have Waluigi Stadium, which feels very much the same. We have the classic Sherbert Land, which we haven't seen in a while, and personally, I'm not a big fan of this one. I felt like a random track on like a random iceberg and just it, it was a weird track lots of cuts in the ice and it just felt strange and then of course you have your Bowser's Castle which was a pretty good track I like watching out for the thwomps and making your way all the way up the staircase and into the courtyard was pretty cool I wasn't a big fan of the roof ending it felt kind of random at the very end but at the same time this was a good Bowser's Castle track we then have DK's Jungle Parkway which was an okay jungle themed track it didn't really feel a lot like DK and it was cool to see the riverboat going down the river and stuff and that big jump but for the most part I'm not going to be really missing that one all that much and then Banshee Boardwalk once again another boardwalk track at night which Nintendo just didn't need to keep adding a whole bunch of these so overall there are a lot of Mario Kart 64 tracks that were missing but I feel like some of the big ones are like Frappe Snowland, Wario Stadium and maybe even Bowser's Castle and DK Jungle Parkway 
but there's still tracks that I feel like aren't going to really make us real sad that they're gone. They are tracks that a lot of us will continue to love in our hearts, but nothing super hard yet. Next up, we have Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance, and there was lots of really cool character-specific tracks that either got brought back and completely remade in Mario Kart in the future and just completely forgot about as well. Uh, but let's look at Peach Circuit, which is one of those completely forgot about. We don't necessarily need this one. I feel like it didn't include anything super, super cool. I mean, Peach's Castle in the background, we have lots of tracks that do have Peach's Castle in the background, so this one wasn't a big hit. Shy Guy Beach, one once again being another beach that's just completely left out. Bowser's Castle, which to me once again wasn't a big one, especially since we just got a Bowser's Castle returning from the SNES. This isn't a big deal because they all kind of looked the same back then, they were just kind of like these weird hard right turns. So. Probably a little glad they didn't bring something like this back. Ouija Circuit was one that was just straight vibes for me. I really loved it. It was just a random weather station that Luigi had and also a giant blimp. But at the same time, I love how it was raining. You can see the water on the track. It was a really cool looking track back then and I felt like they could have remade it to make it look even better. Um, so I am a little sad that this one's not returning. I have nothing against beach tracks, but there are a lot of beach tracks in Mario Kart. This one was a little prettier though. I like seeing the giant cheap cheeps and the lighthouse in the background and the sunset. We really don't have any beaches at sunset, so I really enjoyed looking at this one. It was just a really pretty one to watch. And also, it had like a little boardwalk over the water, which was cool. Yoshi Desert was actually only remade for tour, and it's kind of weird that we don't have many desert tracks within the DLC, or at least like the sand pyramid tomb type of desert tracks that we are lacking. You know, not like the modern deserts like Calamari Desert. But I will say we did get Cheese Land in the base game, so I'm glad that we at least got that one remade, which was pretty cool. So I understand why Yoshi's Desert wasn't added. But Lakeside Park, we just got Riverside Park in the DLC. Lakeside Park is pretty much the same thing, but with an active volcano the entire time. And Broken Pier, once again, another boardwalk type track that we're just not going to get. It made sense. And then that leaves us with Rainbow Road from this game. Which was just pretty much the SNES version, but with the Paper Mario 64 Bowser's floating castle in the sky. I don't know. I love it because I love Paper Mario, but you know, at the same time, it's not a track that I was really begging to make a return. Once again, I feel like Nintendo covered some of the most important tracks from this game and didn't leave too much behind. Personally, I really wanted to see Luigi Circuit. I think Cheap Cheap Island would have been cool for kind of a sunset beach theme. Um, but besides that, yeah, there's really not a lot that I feel like Nintendo needed to include. Now we move on to Mario Kart Double Dash on the Nintendo GameCube, and this is where we start to feel some of the pain, at least me personally. So first off, we have Luigi Circuit, which is another one to start the game. Not a big deal. I like how, you know, there's two paths, two lanes that you can see people coming by in the other direction, which was pretty cool, and just like items smacking everybody. I like that one road intertwine, uh, but yeah, not a big deal. Peach Beach, another one I'm not really like a huge fan of. I know it kind of has that Mario Sunshine vibe, my favorite game of all time. Um, but at the same time, I don't really need to see the Cataquacks again. I don't need to see that specific beach. So I understand why that one didn't necessarily come back. Mushroom Bridge, however is a big one. I know a lot of people out there love Mushroom Bridge, myself included. I love the music, I love the vibes of this track, and this is probably the first one where I'm gonna be in the most heartache that it didn't return, because this used to be my baby. I love this place, and I love driving up this side of the bridge and stuff, and the fact that it was in tour, I really felt like it had a chance but it just didn't make the cut. Now we do have lots of city tracks, so maybe that's the reason, but it still hurts. Mario Circuit is whatever. We have tons of Mario Circuit, so it's not a big deal, uh, but Mushroom City is one that I personally wasn't a fan of. I know it has its fans out there. I felt like it was just a very big, confusing city. There was like that part where you could go in like multiple different areas and lanes and turn in different areas. It was more open, I like that, but we have lots of city tracks, lots. I mean, we just got Mewview Highway, we have New York Minute, and we have tons of other city tracks. So yeah, not a big one there. We have War Mario Coliseum, which I thought was a really cool one, which I really wanted to see return again. It was like a giant circus arena where you have those bikers go around those cages. I really, really loved it. And it was just like had that feeling that was different than most tracks we've had. So that one's going to hurt a little bit. Dino Dino Jungle, another fan favorite that's just going to be completely gone that we actually have seen return in multiple games, but it's not going to return here. I really like this one and going around giant dinosaurs was always cool to me. 
but it looks like it's going to be gone. It is a shame that we're only getting one Bowser's Castle track because there's some really good ones and to me, the GameCube version is a really good one. One of my favorite ones in fact. I like all the quick turns and stuff and I really love the ending with the giant U-turn and the giant fireballs firing at you. I think it's a really cool change and it's actually a pretty difficult track too. You have to be pretty good at racing in this game. Of course you have Rainbow Road and just like, you know, the Bowser's Castles, there's so many Rainbow Roads out there. This one was really good though. I really did enjoy the like the loops and also the pipes that you're shooting through and the city skyline down below. But at the same time, I do feel like we got our fan favorites with Mario Kart 7s and obviously Mario Kart Wii's coming. So they definitely did hit those for us. So this is where I feel like we start to get some of our heartaches because Mario Kart Double Dash had so many good tracks, especially when we look back at things like Mushroom Bridge, which was a big one, Wario Coliseum, Dino Dino Jungle. So yeah, those hurt a little bit. And I know there's some dedicated fans of all those tracks and it's gonna hurt them a lot to not see them return in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. But still, I am glad that we did get what we got from this game. Next up, we have Mario Kart DS. And this one is another one that hurts me a lot. Lots of these, you know, last couple Mario Kart games are definitely going to hurt me. Because there's just some really good tracks missing. Like the best track ever, Figure 8 Circuit? I'm, I'm kidding. It, this track sucks. I'm, I'm not even going on it. It's just an 8. But we have Yoshi Falls, which I know a lot of people like this one. Personally, I don't. It's just one big loop that you keep going around and you can race technically on the waterfall. But... To me, I never was a big fan of this track, even when it was back in Mario Kart Wii. Luigi's Mansion is the craziest thing ever. How in the world is Luigi's Mansion not in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? It's like Luigi's identity. It's like one of the biggest franchises growing for Mario. Like, why? How in the world did that one not make the cut? That one makes me really mad, actually. But we have Desert Hills, which... You know, we don't really need, it looks like dry, dry desert that we already have, so it's not a big deal. But then we obviously have Delfino Square, which is a big one for me, because as a huge Mario Sunshine fan, this one kind of sucks. I get it, though. We have tons of city tracks, and it just looks like another city track that we've already gotten from tour. But it's just that nostalgia factor. I'm really going to miss this one. I know DK Pass has a lot of fans out there. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. It feels like a Shroom Ridge, but just covered in snow. Um, but at the same time, I understand why people love this one, the falling snowballs and stuff the vibes it's really cool and going up the side of that snow mountain is awesome and people are going to be kind of upset that this one's not going to return uh but airship fortress one of the best mario kart tracks of all time and it's not going to be a mario kart 8 deluxe this one ugh, is gonna hurt i'm sorry but yeah we knew it was gonna happen we knew based on the data mine that we were done uh but yeah it, this the, come on nintendo but then we have bowser's castle and rainbow road which I'm not gonna lie to you, I can barely remember any of these. They're not that memorable. Bowser's Castle is kind of cool because you got like that giant turning wheel that you get to drive on and stuff and drive outside of the castle itself, which is always fun. Uh, but then Rainbow Road, yeah, I, I can't even remember a lot about this Rainbow Road. So I don't know. It's gonna have its fans for sure, but yeah. So overall, for Mario Kart DS, I think the big ones, some people will really miss Yoshi Falls. Luigi's Mansion is just huge. Delfino Square definitely has its fans. DK Pass, Airship fortress is going to be so painful and of course the beloved figure eight circuit i mean come on it's amazing next up we have mario kart wii and there's a lot of wii tracks that actually made the cut so that's actually a good sign there's only like a handful that didn't and there are some fan favorites of course but let's get into it luigi circuit once again i'm never really realizing that there's a lot of luigi circuits to actually start some of these mario kart games but not a big deal you know we have tons of circuits already toad's factory is going to make almost the entire world upset. I don't know a single person that doesn't like Toad's Factory. The vibe is awesome. It's a factory. It's Toad's Factory. I mean, come on. That's such a unique location. And the music is great. And just people really love this stage. And it's going to suck that we're not going to be able to see this return. In fact, Toad's Factory really hasn't been getting much love at all in any future Mario games. So, yeah, it's kind of sad that this track is just going to be left and forgotten on Mario Kart Wii, which is just a shame. We have Mario Circuit, which once again, we have enough Mario Circuits and Mario themed tracks. This wasn't a big deal. It didn't do anything super special. But Dry Dry Ruins, which actually returned turned in Mario Kart Tour as well that we're not going to see, which actually was one of the better desert tracks. Going into the little tomb and the actual ruins itself was really cool instead of just going throughout a sandy desert. So this one 
kind of, eh, I, you know, it, I could live with or without it. And Bowser's Castle is very similar to the Mario Kart 8 version. You start off by going into the castle. There's lots of hallways. You even have the wiggling hallways that are very much like the mansion track from Mario Kart 8. And you also have like the fire bars and the giant hallway with the fireball shooting at you. Yeah, it's very similar. We don't necessarily need this one. But yeah, really, there's only one track, I think, from Mario Kart Wii that's really going to hurt a lot of people, and that's Toad's Factory. That one is definitely going to buy it. And then finally, we have Mario Kart 7, and there is a decent amount of tracks that just didn't make the cut. Starting off with Daisy Hills. Daisy Hills looks a lot like Amsterdam Drift with the windmills, the shacks, and even the flowers, so I can definitely see why it wasn't included. I do like the little boardwalk area going up on the side of the mountain. That's pretty cool. And then, you know, obviously gliding into the hot air balloons. But yeah, it's just way too similar. Cheap Cheap Lagoon is another beach one, but I think it's one of my favorite beach ones. It's a lot of time underwater, and you go into the little cave, and you can go into the side of the cavern on the little strip of land and then glide off of it. So this track was kind of cool. You know, it didn't really do anything super special but yeah it's gonna be missed shy guy bazaar was an interesting desert town at night which was a unique one because most of our deserts don't really include anything this cool like a little town to go through a little bazaar um for the most part it's just like i said sand hills and desert um but this would have been a cool one to see return for sure the ones that pain me is woohoo loop and maka woohoo which is also island loop and mountain loop these pretty much take you around the entirety of the Woohoo Mountain from Wii Sports Resort. And I just cannot believe they didn't include it in this game. A game that also has F-Zero tracks, Animal Crossing, Zelda themed tracks. How in the world did this track not make it? It's such a unique one to go around this giant island. And it really is just pure nostalgia for people, especially since most of us grew up with Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. This one just, it, it, it kind of hurts that not even a single one of these were included. We have another Mario Circuit, which is just Mario Circuit, you know? We get to go inside Peach's Castle this time for a little bit, so that's a little unique, but for the most part, it's just stuff that we've seen time and time again. It reminds me a lot of Royal Raceway, you know, once again, just going back to the cherry blossom trees and stuff, but for the most part, it's an okay track that we don't necessarily need again. But we have Wario Shipyard, definitely has some fans, this giant underwater shipyard, which is weird, you know, but... You know, at the same time, I don't necessarily think about it all too much or miss it that much. So I can see, you know, the game having it or not having it. I definitely do love drifting around the top of the ship, coming out of the water and then diving back in. I thought that was really cool. Um, but then we have Bowser's Castle. This Bowser's Castle was kind of unique because you spent a lot of the time outside the castle, like on the outsides of it. And also it incorporated both gliding and underwater sections, which was really cool. And it had some pretty cool shortcuts as well. It's definitely not one of the worst. And it's definitely one that I would have loved to see return. But at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. But the big ones we're missing here are Shy Guy Bazaar, definitely the Woohoo Island tracks, and probably Wario Shipyard. And here's the final list of all 54 tracks that did not make the cut. And I didn't forget about you, number 55, Piranha Plant Pipeline. Yes, we will miss these 55 tracks, and it will always haunt us that one of our favorite tracks just still could not make the cut. But at the end of the day, Nintendo, we thank you for giving us 48 tracks returning to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in 2023. I know a lot of us wanted a new Mario Kart, but it's been amazing to be able to revisit some of the tracks that I've played as a little boy. And seeing them again in HD was something that I never thought I'd be able to say. And playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe this long is kind of crazy. So I know this video may come off to a lot of people as negative or complaining that these tracks didn't get in the game, but I am so unbelievably thankful for what we have. And in fact, I have a video coming up talking about Mario Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in general, talking about how much of an amazing game that this game has been for us for the last decade and how much it meant to me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.